Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another video that is if you like this book you should read that one. I have done many of these videos before so I'm going to have a playlist linked in the cards and description box if you want even more recommendations. This time around I'm going to be focusing on science fiction and I gotta say I do think I have some really good comparisons in this list so hopefully you will find something to enjoy based off of another book that you already love. All that being said, let's get started. First, I want to talk about Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which is a sci-fi thriller following a man who goes out for ice cream when he is spending the night with his family, something goes terribly wrong, he is held up at gunpoint, and soon enough he wakes up and finds out that his family is no longer his family and everything has changed. I think most people know the general synopsis or premise of this book, even if they haven't read it, but I'm going to leave it there, just in case you haven't, because I do think the fun is exploring the book for yourself. And I recently got a chance to read a similar book that definitely gave me Dark Matter vibes. So if you have already read and love this book, I would definitely recommend picking up Deep Dive by Ron Walters. And this is a story of a man who is a software programmer and he gets the opportunity to test out some new VR technology. And in doing so, something goes horribly wrong and when he takes off the hardware, he finds out that his life has changed and his daughters no longer seem to exist. Now you can probably tell from the synopsis why I'm comparing these two books because both of them center around a man who has a family that they love and then through circumstances have to go and try to find them or figure out and puzzle out what has happened in order to get them back. And so I definitely think that it's a sci-fi novel with family and heart at the center of it. And at the same time, it deals with some really fun scientific ideas. And so I do like the fact that this book goes in a different direction than Dark Matter. While they have a similar setup, it didn't just feel like a rehash of it. Instead, it goes in a different direction, a different avenue, and explores a whole different topic. So I did really enjoy this one as well. It is fast paced, it's easy to fly through, which is the same thing I would describe as Dark Matter. And so if you like one and have not read the other one, definitely I encourage you to remedy that right away. Next, I wanna talk about Six Wakes by Mer Lafferty, and this is another sci-fi thriller, or at least a sci-fi mystery, that follows a group on this generational ship. They are exploring through the galaxy, and in this future, there's the ability for people to clone themselves, and so when their original clone dies, they just have their consciousness move to the new body. However, at the beginning of the story, and this is right at the beginning, so it is not a spoiler, they wake up in a room and discover that their original clones have died, something has gone terribly wrong, and for reasons they cannot quite remember what happened in those last few moments. And so this is described as a closed mystery in space because they are on this small ship, and so there are only a very limited number of crewmen who could have been responsible for these murders, and because of their missing memories they don't know who did it, and they have to puzzle through and piece it together. And so we as a reader get to follow along the mystery, trying to figure out who was behind it, and of course it has that fun science fiction twist with the elements of the clones. And so I did think this one was very interesting, especially if you like mysteries with just again that kind of science element in the background. So I did really enjoy this one when I read it years ago. I think I even did a video review. I'll link it if I remember. But the book I want to compare it to is another one also by Orbit, and that is Far From the Light of Home by Tadia Thompson. And this story follows a crew who is once again on a generational ship. They are in, I believe, a form of like cryosleep because the journey is so long. They wake up and find out that crew members, or passengers rather, have been murdered in their sleep and they have to figure out again who was behind it. So once again, that close murder mystery because there's only a limited number of suspects and we have to puzzle out who is behind it. Of the two books, I do think that Six Wakes is stronger, but again, they have really similar synopsis. So if you read Six Wakes and go, oh, that's really cool, I wanna read something like that, this is definitely the closest I've ever read to something along the same veins. Next, I want to give a recommendation for those of you that love the Wayfair series by Becky Chambers. This is actually the second book, um, but most of you are at least familiar with the first book, A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. And that is a story that I always describe as a cute, diverse space opera with not a lot of plot, but a lot of heart. It is very character focused, following a crew that is responsible for making these roadways across the galaxy. And really they are just a crew of misfits that come together and appreciate 
appreciate each other's diverse aspects and you'll learn about the different alien cultures. And it's very beloved on booktube, I'm sure you know it. Anyway, but people are always looking for similar books because it is kind of a newer, more cozy space opera than is normally seen. And I'm actually happy, yeah, that I have two books to recommend if you enjoy the Wayfarer series. And the first one that I wanna recommend is You Sexy Thing by Kat Rambo. And this follows ex-military officers that have retired from their careers and have now started up a restaurant in space. And so, of course, terrible things ensue and they have to actually go and save their ship and their restaurant. But this is a book that, once again, it does have a plot, but it's a very light and minor part of the story. Instead, it's much more about the aliens and the diversity. And because, again, it's focused around a restaurant, it also has a focus on alien food. And I think that will appeal to those of you that really loved Chef in A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and thought that those aspects were really interesting. So this one just gave me really similar vibes. Again, a super diverse book, very optimistic, very lighthearted. It's again, not one to be taken super seriously, but if you want something that's just optimistic and gives a kind of brighter version of a possible future, I do think that this one has really similar feels. And the other comparison I want to make is that to Escaping First Contact by Tia Spire. And this follows a group of several different ships that are investigating what appears to be an alien ship that is out in space. It appears to be the setup of a space horror, but I will say that the horror elements are awfully light. Instead, what I would say is that this is a book that has some really interesting alien character work. So it's written in a future where there are other aliens that exist and they are not just simply humans with slightly different noses as often is the case in Star Trek. Instead, these aliens truly have very different cultural norms in terms of gender, social upbringing, family groupings, all of that. And the author takes a lot of time to really explore and explain those ideas within the book. So again, I think for a lot of us, what we loved about the Wayfair series was that it really, again, brought diversity not just to humanity, but also exploring the idea that humans and other alien species would have different ideas around all of these cultural aspects. And I really thought that that was well explored in this book. So again, I do think this one is a bit lighter in plot, but the character work, the alien cultures were absolutely fascinating. And if you were looking for more of those elements, this is definitely one you'd want to check out. Now, this next comparison might be a little bit of a cheat, but it's my video, so I'm gonna do it anyway. I wanna recommend a book for those of you that love Fuzzy Nation by John Scalzi, which is about a contractor who comes across a planet and there are all these riches, so he's going to get super rich along with the corporation that he is currently working for. However, he finds out that there are highly intelligent creatures that he nicknames Fuzzies that are living on this planet and he goes about going through the legal process of protecting them and the story goes from there. And the book that I want to compare it to is technically a cheat because it was actually the inspiration for Scalzi's book, and that one is called Little Fuzzy by H. Beam Piper. And this is a story that was written many years ago with a very similar plot, once again following a contractor who's on a planet, discovers highly intelligent little fuzzies, and goes through the legal process of protecting them. So this is a book that I would recommend literally if you are interested in reading how Scalzi's story came to be and the real inspiration behind it. And I want to recommend it just because I feel like the original story is not as well known or not as well read these days. I think it's a little bit harder to get a hold of. I read it via Audible because they have an exclusive copy that was available in the catalog back when I was checking it out. But this is one that it was interesting to read. I read them somewhat back to back, which I would sort of recommend doing and sort of not. And I will say that they have very similar plots. I was actually surprised how closely John Scalzi sticks to the original story. But as you would expect, if you're familiar with reading Scalzi's work, is that it's filled with a lot more humor. Not to say that the first one is dry, but I would say the original is just a little bit more of a straight story and is much more focused on the themes of, you know, preservation and so forth, which definitely are explored in John Scalzi's work, but he does so in a much more entertaining way, in a way that's going to kind of capture people's imagination with a lot more humor. So it was really fun to read the two and get to see how they compared and how they contrasted. And definitely if you like one and want to read kind of the same story again, but remix, it's fun to read the other one as well. 
Finally, I want to recommend a book for those of you that love We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. This is a story of a man who goes about preserving his memories in this process that allows him that after he dies, his memory is supposed to be brought back in some sort of form in the future when they have the technology to do so. As you would expect right at the beginning of the story, something terrible happens and well, he wakes up in the future and the way that he wakes up is not what he expected and the story goes from there. Now this is a book that I have recommended in previous videos, but I'm going to give a different comparison here. And the book that I want to compare it to today is Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. And this is a story of a man who works as an expendable employee for a company. So there is the technology to bring him back to life. Essentially every time he dies, his memories are just downloaded into a new body and he's able to go back to work again. This book definitely plays with the idea that a lot of corporations see their workers as very disposable and takes that to a whole new level. This book, just like We Are Bob, has a lot of witty humor in it. And I think for a lot of you who experienced dinner E. Taylor's book did it on audio and Mickey Seven also has a fantastic audiobook narration, a different narrator, but he does a really great job. So I do think that if you like the one, there's a really good chance you'll like the other. I don't want to go too far into the plot of We Are Legion, We Are Bob, but just know that it kind of also deals with multiple versions of themselves and it just kind of gets into some similar situations. So I think, again, I just see a lot of comparisons there and I feel pretty good about this recommendation. So I definitely hope that you'll give Mickey Seven a try if you already love Dennis e. Taylor's work. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I'm also okay if you disagree with me. If you have better comparisons, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget that I do have more videos on if you like this, you should read that, not just for science fiction, but also other genres as well. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of adult science fiction as well as fantasy, horror, and thrillers, you can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, and if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.